How are we tonight? Are we good? Yeah! Have you enjoyed our evening, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah! That's what I like to hear. Now I'm going to tell you a bit about myself. I'm currently a single man, and I'm single because I struggle to speak to women. And in fact, I'm so bad that my mates say that I practically turn it into a sport. And after years of watching me try and fail, they finally decide to offer me some advice. And when I say advice, I don't mean the Gok Wan type style, where they strip down naked in front of a mirror and make me cry. <laughs> it's my parents' job to do that. <laughs> and according to my mates, the type of clothes you wear, that's important. Now, I'm not very fashion conscious, and I don't have a gay best friend. I just have my dad. And he thinks that socks and sandals drive women wild with desire. Well, in actual fact, it makes him think special needs. <laughs> and I recently discovered how important clothes were when I found out about these things called traffic light parties. And at these parties, if a woman wears red, she's unavailable. If she wears yellow, it's a maybe. If she wears green, it means she's good for the go. But the problem is, with women who wear green, they get up feeling disappointed because guys come through them so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Couple nervous last there from the men. <laughs> Um, and yeah, apparently, confidence, that's the key. And my mates say that I struggle to speak to women because I lack the confidence. The confidence to buy some of a hip now. <laughs> now, I've listened to my mates' advice and I've acted on it, and yet I still struggle to speak to women. Young women especially. And when I say young women, I don't mean ten-year-olds. I'm not a priest! <laughs> I haven't got my badges yet! <laughs> and the thing is, I want to speak to women. I really do. But I can't. I'm always limited to what sort of small talk you get in lifts and try not to fart. <laughs> Before I'd actually talk to a woman, my body made me clam up, my mouth go dry, and I'd start to sweat uncontrollably. And then, when I eventually plucked up the car to go over, the woman would always go, Oh, what's that smell? And I'd immediately know, it was me. <laughs> and so I'd turn back round and follow the river sweat back to my seat. If I were to stay and talk to her, the smell probably would have gone from B.O., to the equivalent of me taking the smelliest shit in the world and then locking her in there. <laughs> and it really doesn't help when you women stand in groups. Because I can tell you now that no guy is confident enough to go over and approach her by themselves. But of course, after me saying this, there's always one guy that goes, I am. And this will be the type of guy that tell you he's got a big dick. I've got to mention that he's the pretty one in the prison showers. <laughs> so what I do in women standing groups is not talk to them, but just to grind up against them. <laughs> Which they find really weird. <laughs> Probably because there's no music on. <laughs> and this was when I discovered that grinding is only really socially acceptable when music is playing. <laughs> and let me just clarify this. I don't mean when any music is playing. There's nothing more embarrassing than being dragged away by police from your niece's seventh birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> So, because I'm really bad at talking to women, I thought I'd prepare myself a few chat-up lines you know, to get the conversation started. But I end up being really nervous, so I end up ruining it by the next bit on the end. Oh, come on, like, you know, like, um... Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? Because it looks like you need plastic surgery. <laughs> I tried showing one woman that I'm actually quite intelligent and rather the gentleman. Did you know that a girl can drown an inch of water? Can I buy you a drink? <laughs> Are you religious? Because you're the answer to all my prayers. I've always wanted to meet Bigfoot! <laughs> if I were a traffic light, I'll turn red every time you walk by, just so that I can stare at it a bit more longer. But if I did that, I'd have to leave my binoculars. <laughs> Are you a from a meat market? Because you look like a prime rib. Well, the prize pig, I'm not too sure yet. <laughs> Is your last name Gillette because you're the best a man can get? Or more accurately, the best that I can get? <laughs> I just thought I'd come over and tell you that I think you're the most prettiest girl in the room. And that if you'd let me, I'd take you back to mine and ravage you until you've been fully satisfied and all your sexual desires have been fulfilled. Except for one, where you get to escape. <laughs> Remarkably, one of those lines actually worked on one woman, but she turned me down because she doesn't go for a guy with a beard. I said, I'm really growing because of the way it feels when I shave it off. What's your excuse? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch didn't give me her number. <laughs> but despite all these setbacks, I still try. Why? Because I get bored. Why, in fact, just the other day I approached these two rather attractive women, and as I walked over, they are Stranger Danger. I thought, how the hell do two 60-year-olds know about Stranger Danger? <laughs> <laughs> then one of them said, he's looking at your tits, he's looking at your tits. 
And in all fairness, I was. <laughs> they were lopsided. I had never seen that before. Well, until now. Um, <laughs> but then, the other one decided to call me pervert. I'm like, oh, for God's sake. How'd they find out my nickname? I mean, it's a good job the police weren't there. Was they would have found out my other nickname. Truncheon Taker. <laughs> I've been Jack Bartlett. Thank you for your time. Woo!